This is the new Ford Ranger Platinum. It is the new king of the best-selling Ford Ranger range if we ignore the performance ute, the Raptor. Today, we're gonna to take it for a drive and we're gonna to get to know everything there is to know about it. I'm Gwen Butler. This is our Ford Ranger Platinum review and you're watching Drive. Okay, now I'm gonna run you through what this Platinum model shares with the wild track below it and the areas where it's different. Obviously, we've got a four-door dual cab, which is four-wheel drive underneath. Under the bonnet is Ford's three-litre, 184 kilowatt, 600 newton meter turbo diesel V6. That's hooked up to Ford's 10-speed transmission and selectable four-wheel drive, as I said. Dimensionally, the Platinum is 5.37 meters tip to tip, same as a wild track, 2.2 meters wide at the mirrors, same as a wild track, but it's actually three and a half centimeters taller, not because of the surfboard up there, but the flexible rack system that we've got it sitting on. So be aware of that if you have to park in any low roof car parks. Compared to the wild track, there is a lot more chrome going on in the grill around the fog lights and it continues around the windows. You've probably spotted the 20 inch silver alloys that look like they've been stolen from the Everest Platinum, but they're actually a different design. Plus, the Everest Platinum rides on 21-inch tyres, not the 20s we have here. Where the Wild Track gets Goodyear Wrangler all-terrains, the Platinum gets Wranglers as well, but they're the less aggressive all-season tread, which should make them a little quieter and maybe grippier on the blacktop. Moving to the back of the Platinum now, and the big addition is definitely this flexible rack system, which adds a lot of versatility to what this ute can do. Now, you can see we've got it set up here carrying a surfboard, but equally, you can imagine it could be a kayak up there or a ladder or even some lumbar. Now, to help you understand how it works, we're going to reset it and then we'll actually set it up step by step. Now back to the tub and you get the Wild Tracks drop-in bed liner, cargo rails, and you also get various tie-down points, a couple of bed lights, and a 12-volt power socket. The Ranger Platinum has the Wild Tracks powered roller cover and the tailgate is keyed into the central locking. But it goes one better with a gas strut which damps the tailgate's opening action. Okay, now all these modifications and additions change the Raptor Platinum's carrying capacity compared to the Wild Track. Maximum payload is 54 kilograms less at 912 kilograms because the Platinum is actually 48 kilograms heavier. There are a few other changes to weights and GVM, so if you're planning on pushing the limits here, you should very much check the specs in my written review at drive.com.au. Okay, now moving to the interior. And again, I'm going to run through what this Platinum gets compared to the Wild Track so that we understand what extra value we're getting. And we're in the back seat here and the differences really are bugger all. Well, no, there is one big difference and that is the leather trim, quilted leather trim, whereas the Wild Track just gets plain leather. But apart from that, it is all very similar and very familiar. Obviously, you can see there is a decent amount of leg room, knee room, and under seat foot room for adults. Headroom is absolutely fine, no problems whatsoever. In terms of other creature comforts, we've got a couple of air vents down here and a USB-A and USB-C plug. And of course, rear floor mats so that when you step in here with your work boots, you don't get the carpet too dirty. And we've got an armrest here with the Ford Ranger action that I really don't like. You don't pull it in the natural way. You actually have to pull the latch down to unlock it and then you pull it out, which has a couple of cup holders. That is about it. So why don't we move to the front and see what else we get up there. Okay, now moving into the front seats and straight away you can see this cabin is a beautiful place to be. We've got all the Wild Tracks goodies, including this awesome 12 inch central infotainment screen, which has AM, FM, digital radio, satellite navigation, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and a whole bunch of settings for the active safety features this car has. We also have a 12.4 inch 
digital driver display stolen straight from the Raptor. And another Raptor hand-me-down is the Bang & Olufsen 10 speaker sound system, which is absolutely awesome. Audiophiles will love it. Beyond that, we've got quilted leather front seats, which are ventilated here, as well as heated like they are on the wild track. 10-way adjustment for the passenger and 10-way adjustment for the driver, but different to the Raptor, this one has a memory function. In other things in the cabin you need to know about, obviously we've got a couple of cup holders here. The door pockets are big enough for bottle holders. Storage areas include the double glove box that only the top end rangers get and a cup holder on the outboard for the passenger. Okay, now let's get on the move and let's see how this baby drives. Okay, now that we're rolling, what am I learning about the driving experience? Key questions for me, do the bigger 20 inch wheels and tires unlock extra grip? Do they change the ride in any way? Do they change the steering in any way? Do they have an impact on the in-cabin ambience with excessive tire noise and the like? Because to be honest, the Ranger is one of the better utes, if not the best, in terms of in-cabin quietness. The short answer is no. The Ranger Platinum is not worlds different to the wild track below it, or indeed even the sport below that. It remains one of the classiest and most dynamically accomplished utes on sale today. The ride has some typical ute traits, like a firm and sometimes jouncy rear end, but it is the most polished of all utes for compliance and for comfort. And in my opinion, one of the sharpest handling as well. Can I pick the difference with the tires? Sometimes I feel like I can, but don't quote me on it. I think unless you're driving the two back to back, you're gonna struggle. As for steering effort, I really like the Ranger's steering to start with. It has a firmness to it, a weightiness to it without being heavy. I mean, this is a 5.4 meter long ute weighing almost two and a half tons. So you'd be forgiven if it was heavy, but it's not. It's actually a really easy car to drive and an agile car to maneuver. The brakes are good. What do you want from brakes? You want them to be there when you need them and you want them to respond to slight pressure, but you also really want them to respond when you need to in a hurry. And these brakes do the job really well. Now, what about the drivetrain? The Ranger's 184 kilowatt and 600 newton meter three litre is a sweetie. It's very strong and it's always willing. Conversely, I'm not a big fan of Ford's 10 speed transmission. In my opinion, it's overkill. And I can't help thinking it was developed for marketing reasons more than real world driving. But if we have to have it, then it works best with this big V6, which has the torque to accelerate meaningfully without demanding shorter gears all the time, without demanding that it get busy and change a lot to give you good acceleration. In short, the less work the transmission does, the happier I am with the drivetrain. That's a big issue for the two litre four cylinder on other ranges, in my opinion. It's simply too busy and too obtrusive in everyday driving. This is the sweeter package. In other creature comforts in here, we've got dual zone climate control as per the wild track. We've got a charging mat down here for your mobile phone. And of course, the obligatory McDonald's fries holder. We also score this auxiliary switch bank, which is probably for uh, landing gear or ailerons or flaps or reverse thrust for your aeroplane or probably more likely for a light bar on your bull bar and the winch kit and any other accessories if you're a hardcore off-roader. Oh, and I forgot to mention the heated steering wheel. Being a resident of Australia's southernmost mainland state, I like heated steering wheels. If you've made it this far into the video, do us a favour and hit the like button. And if you've got any comments to share or questions, chuck them in the comments below. Remember, always subscribe to Drive and hit that notification bell so that when Drive drives new cars, you hear about it first. And now back to the Drive. Okay, so overall, no great leap forward on the driving front. But then it didn't need to be because it's already at the forefront of the ute world dynamically. But a fair bit has changed cosmetically. On the outside, and we've got functionality improvements on the inside. Then there's the added practicality of that adjustable rack system. How do we put a value on all of that? And how do we decide if it's worth $5,800? If we look to Ford's options list on other ranges, we can get some idea of how to divvy up the extra cost. For example, these 20 inch wheels and tires are optional on a wild track for $500. 
add the auxiliary switch bank up here, the matrix LED headlights, and the cracking Bang & Olufsen sound system, another $1,850. Rear floor mats, $150 to $200. But that still leaves about $3,000 of price difference unaccounted for. How much are the extra chromey bits worth to you around the window sills, in the fog lights, and in the front grille? Then, of course, we've got the damped tailgate, which is a really nice to have, but not really a need to have. We've got the upgraded front seats, fully electric, with memory on the driver's seats, and now with ventilation as well as heating. How much for those? Plus, the big flagship addition to this Platinum has to be that flexible rack system. In my opinion, all of that adds up to more than $5,800 worth of extra value. So in that instance, it feels about right to me that Ford's put the Platinum and priced it where it has. It brings tangible benefits and lifestyle improvements to the wild track and makes it a worthy addition to the Ranger range. And at the end of the day, it's actually really nice to drive and a really nice space to be in.